Hello YouTube, I'm Bill Hensley, and I've got some news to share with everyone today. I'd like to announce a few other social media sites that you can follow me at, as if YouTube wasn't enough. For those who are interested, you can now follow me at Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. I'll be talking more about this towards the end of the video, so please stick around, and feel free to check me out on these other platforms as well. So one of the things I like to do from time to time is check out this app I have on my cell phone that tells me of new charging stations that have come online recently. Earlier this week, I had just happened to open the app, and to my surprise, a location that I've been waiting to see come online suddenly appeared within the app. I quickly hopped over to the PlugShare app to see if I could verify its existence, and it was showing up on there as well. So this got me excited, because this was actually a charging location that I knew was coming for some time now. L.L. Bean first made an announcement about this sometime around October of 2017 when the first eight Tesla superchargers were put in. What made the announcement so special, though, was that eight more stations were going to be put in to support all other models of electric vehicles for a total of 16 charging spots one could plug into with their EVs at L.L. Bean. This would make L.L. Bean the first in the state with so many charging spots all in one location. It is an electric vehicle owner's dream come true and a business model that others should take note of. So here we are. We are headed to L.L. Bean in Freeport, Maine. And right now we have just under, or just above, a quarter of a charge. And it's like 20 miles to get there from here. And if I look on the app here, it also shows 35% uh, of a charge. So, But the whole reason we're going to L.L. Bean is because they had just put in uh, eight charging stations for all other vehicles. They have had uh, Tesla superchargers there at L.L. Bean uh, sometime around the fall. They were installed or they were activated. And I remember uh, we, we took a trip out there and I took a picture of myself <laughs> saying, it's like, oh, this is great, but there's no place for me to plug in my leaf. So I found out like online and like through the paper and some news outlets that the uh, superchargers were being put in or they had just become activated uh, at L.L. Bean. And in that news article, they had also stated that there were going to be eight others. So that's a total of 16 uh, charging slots for electric vehicles at L.L. Bean. It's going to be like one of the largest uh, uh, places in the state of Maine currently. So I thought that was really cool. But at the time, they only had the eight superchargers. They didn't have the other eight at, at that time. So just the other day, when I was checking out my my app and I had just logged in for whatever reasons and it wasn't specifically for that I was just looking to see what new charging stations in in Maine had become active if any and to my surprise it had said like 14 hours ago the charging stations came online the other eight so I was like oh my gosh we need to go check this out so here we are and we are on our way to go check out the charging stations at L.L. Bean and I also thought that we would uh do a review because it, it has been three months since we've had the uh, Chevrolet Bolt EV. So, being that we've uh, had this car for three months now, uh, what's your thoughts on it, honey? I don't miss my gas powered car at all. It doesn't drive any differently, and I don't miss it. Like, I love having the L pedal, like being able to just put my foot down and accelerate or take my foot off, and it slows down. Like, well, in that sense, it drives differently, but it's not like it's... Um, but I love it. Like, right. I, like, I drove your car recently for because you had mine, and yours doesn't have that. And I was like... I oh, my God. You, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you use the brake. But it still has, you know, B mode, so it, it will slow down, but it won't come to a complete stop. No, this this has... Safe. Yeah, this has a more aggressive... Uh, and that's, that's the 2017 Leaf. Uh, I will be doing a review here shortly um, on the 2017 Leaf because I've almost had it for a year, so... Uh, sometime in July, I'll be posting a video about, uh, you know, just a one-year review on the Leaf. Uh, but not getting into that now, just getting into, you know, talking about uh, your car here. Uh, what else can you say, you know, in the three months of ownership of, of having the uh, Bolt EV experiences, you know, what it's like? Well, like we took our, on our trip, as many people have watched our videos, we took it all the way down to Virginia. Yes, we did. And... It was a very comfortable ride. Like I, we weren't cramped. We had our car packed full to the brim, and it didn't drive any differently just because we had it packed. Like we got great range. Um, 
you know, it was very comfortable. And we've done this trip to Virginia. That would be our third time going down, both other times in a gas-powered car and this being our first time in an electric car. And it was probably one of our more comfortable trips down, you know. Yes, it was. And, and one thing I'd like to point out, too, because where, where you brought that up, uh, when we take that trip, regardless if it's in an electric car or a gas-powered car, we always stop halfway. Uh, we've had a couple of naysayers and you know I'm not mentioning any names but we have had some people comment on our YouTube page here about oh well you had to stop at a hotel and it's costing you extra money we stop at the hotel regardless so it doesn't matter if uh, we've we done the trip once without stopping Daddy! and it was not a very pleasant trip at all like we that was when we first got married yeah, when we went on our honeymoon and we were regardless whether we had Ben or not but Ben definitely is a big factor in it like we decide to stop because of him but even without him we have a more enjoyable trip if we choose to stop halfway spend some time sleeping whether it's a whole night or not and then continue on the next day it just makes the whole trip yes it takes two days to get there but we plan that in our planning of the trip like oh right. no, it's going to take four days of travel just getting there and home okay so what's the rest of our trip going to look like while we're down there so that has nothing to do with this yeah being an electric car that just has to be with that's right how we travel and in, in all honesty if we had wanted to get there in one day we could still have done it yeah. if, if we wanted to it, it would have been real late at night but we would we could have done it in one day we so we had to get up much yeah, we would have left a little bit earlier and we would have got there a little bit later. Yes, there's charging in between, but, you know, but anyways, moving on. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we've had our trip. We've gone Holy to... Water. Water, water. There's water out there. Yeah, there's the river. You know, we've gone on several trips, you know, day trips and just things around the state of Maine that we love to do and I've always done and we've never no issues. You know, going to Old Orchard Beach or going to Freeport today or going to Funtown and getting home, like, whether I need charging or not. The upside that I like about my car compared to your 2017 Leaf is that I know I can make it there and back. I don't right, have right. to worry about stopping to charge, which for me was a big piece about getting the Bolt versus, um, like, maybe an older Leaf or something. Like, the range was very important to me. Um, just because I didn't want to have to consider that in my travels. So I don't find that I spend my days traveling any differently when I go to work or drop Ben off at daycare. Like, I'm not taking different routes. I'm not driving any differently. I do what I've always done and I just keep going and I like that. I love that most people when they go, oh, is that your new car out there? And they go, yeah, it's an all-electric vehicle. They go, that's an electric car. They have no idea by looking at it that it's an electric car. It doesn't stand out against any of the other cars parked at work. You know what I mean? Like most people, unless I say something, have no idea what it is. They just assume it's another car. So one of the other features that we love about the car is the fact that we can hook our cell phones up and use Google Maps off of it to do GPS, um, which is nice because it's a nice full screen. It's easy to read. It talks to you. It's loud enough because it comes to the car. So you hear the directions clearly it's not this little tiny screen um, when we first got the car the GPS had a black ring around it not ring but square around it black right bar. it was in like a 4 3 ratio yeah. not 16 by 9 <laughs> and then they came out with a software update and then once we got the software update it is now full screen so it takes up even more so it's easier to read so and it's nice because it's very easy to click on it Type, either type in or say the location you're going to and as you see now we have LLB programmed into it and it will give us directions along the way. Not that I don't know how to get there but just as an example. <laughs> um, it looks nice. It does look nice. It's so. large and in charge. Yeah <laughs> and it's so weird like going into a car that has like a nor like a an older GPS system like you still have yours hooked up in your car it's so tiny now like compared to like looking at this GPS right. and I'm and, like, well, and that's, that's something that? to that's something to say too uh you know my car is an s model there are three different uh, trim levels of the nissan leaf you got your s which is your more or less bottom of the line uh you've got your what is it sv and then sl i believe and on the bolt you've got two trim levels you've got the lt which is what this is and then you got the Premier. and in either of them you get you get this you know, infotainment center. So that's that's a big plus. I kind of wish that all trim levels of the Leaf 
had the uh, the GPS, but but it doesn't. But it's been great, and it's, the nice part is, you know, as long as I have my cell phone, I can plug it in, plug in an address, and my GPS is always with me because my cell phone is always with me. So um, another thing that I'm finding that I love about the car is now that summer has almost arrived, as of tomorrow, um, the weather has finally heated up here in Maine, and we are finally able to use our AC, so we're getting a taste of how the AC works, which we hadn't really done before. Right. And my car is very quick to have the AC. Like, I turn it on, and within minutes, it's nice and cold, and it's comfortable. It's a little weird, because in this car, as you can see, the heat and the AC are the same button. Yes. So, <laughs> excuse me. You basically just turn it on, set the temperature, and let it do its thing. And it figures it out whether it's supposed to be AC or heat. And I've had cold days where I've gotten in and had it set at 70 and the heat comes on and I've had other days where I've gotten on the car and tight and have it still set at 70 and the AC turns on. I, it, I don't know how it works and I don't care how it works. I just know <laughs> that it works and I'm telling you for both ways. And you haven't had any issues with it either, no, right? I know some other people I think may have said that they, it didn't quite work for them so they either had to like turn it down really low to get the AC working or turn it up really high to get the heat but we haven't experienced that like, I and I, I've been kind of keeping my eyes on that to see if we were going to experience that same thing but it just works so like, I <laughs> set at 70 because that's a pretty comfortable temperature um, and it, it goes either way like in the morning you know I don't turn the heat on now because we're in the summertime and no one needs the heat so I just turn off the whole system and then when it gets warm enough I turn it on and it, AC automatically and it's cold like like when we took our trip there were times like oh it's got a little hot in the car and we turn it on and then we'd be like oh it's freezing now like it it's nice when you're hot and you just want to cool down quickly that it you don't have to wait 20 minutes for and i've had cars where you have waited 20 minutes for it to finally cool down before my ac kicked in so here we are we're in freeport and we're real close to ll bean in 1000 feet turn right onto justin's way and we're getting ready to check out these uh, electric vehicle chargers. And there's the Tesla chargers. Turn left onto Cross Street, then turn left. I see them. The Clipper Creek's right over there. Oh. Nice. Okay, I see it. That looks perfect. And there's a leaf. So we've got a leaf right there charging. And we're going to park sort of next to the leaf. And we'll get our charge on too. Oh, they're not even plugged in. Nope. Oh, there's no light fill. Oh, is it not active yet? Look, it's, there's no lights like you would see. Wouldn't oh, no. A power light? Yeah, there's, there should be a power light. Oh, look, you can even see they don't have the power meter in there yet. There's oh, yeah, yep. There's just a piece of cardboard right there, so. We can see the... Uh, Electrical, it looks like it's still being installed, so it's not quite ready. How many do they have? Two, four, yeah, so they've eight. got they've got eight. We've got two on each one of these uh, pedestals here, so two there, two there, two more over here. But eventually, eventually, we will have charging here. Oh, we can at least say we came and we saw. <laughs> we'll be back again. We, can, I mean, we will be back we're again. Not, we're not far from here, so we'll definitely be back. Yes. Hold on, Mexican. At this point, there wasn't much more that we could do, so we just walked around L.L. Bean to let Ben burn off some energy of his own before we made the trip back home. We made a point to check out the giant fish tank, and we grabbed a bite to eat over at Johnny Rockets. Even though we weren't able to get a charge at L.L. Bean, we were still able to make our way back home as we had plenty of juice left in the pack for our return trip. So one of the things I like most about my car is the fact that I don't have to stop at a gas station and buy gas. All I have to do is pull into our garage, open up my charging port, and charge in my garage. Anybody who knows me knows that I used to run my gas cars down to <laughs> zero. I hated putting gas in it, so this is so much easier. Just like that, we're plugged in. Yay! And I'm charging. <laughs> Hopefully. Yay! Yep, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so. And where we got it down to uh, on our return trip, we, we came back here with 25% left on the car. 
we've got Hilltop Reserve set, so it'll bring it up to about 80%. So it's going to put at least 30 kilowatts in there, and we know that 30 kilowatts cost us just under $4, so where it's going to go probably just over 30 it's probably going to be like a $5 charge. Yeah. To and gas right now is like 270 something yeah. 280 we think so, as high as 3 depending on where you're located, so I'll take this. And I don't have to stop at a gas station. I hate stopping at gas stations. Like everyone would say, oh, you just pull it, it's right there, and there's a million of them. I get it. I still hate doing it. This is so much easier. Yep. And that's pretty much it. I look forward to doing a follow-up video as soon as those stations come online. If you've enjoyed this video, why not click on that subscribe button below? And if you're a big fan of my channel, why don't you check me out over at Patreon, where you can make a monthly pledge to help keep this channel going and help spread the word about sustainable energy and alternative means of transportation. Until next time, I'm Bill Hensley. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.